This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Hello everyone, I'm Mitsa Hone, and today is Wednesday, so that means it's time for another MTG Top 10. On Friday's Top 10 this week, as well as the MTG Top 10 a week from today, I'm going to be looking at the worst and then the best creature types in Magic. Looking at them collectively the same way I looked at mechanics a couple of weeks ago. As part of the research for these, I obviously had to look up how many creatures of each type there were, and in so doing, I found myself putting together this MTG Top 10, which is actually two separate but brief MTG Top 10s, looking at the creature types that have appeared on the most cards, and the ones that have appeared on the fewest cards. For this list, I included cards that made creature tokens with a specific creature type, as well as creatures that themselves have that creature type. Cards that both have the creature type and make creature tokens of the same type only count once, because the goal here is to find the most individual cards that have that creature type. Let's start by looking at the 10 least frequent creature types in all of Magic. For the 10 least frequent creature types, there are two main groups. While all 10 of these only appear on a single card in the entire game, there are 8 of them that appear on a single creature card, and then there are 2 of them that don't even appear on a creature card. They only appear on cards that make tokens with that creature type. It is important to note that once upon a time there were lots of rare creature types that only existed on individual cards, with many having a creature type identical to their name. But in 2007, during Lorewind Block, Wizards did the Grand Creature Type update that for the most part cleaned out these rare creature types by giving them an errata that assigned them a new creature type that was more common. The cards on the least frequent list are largely those that for some reason weren't changed in the update despite only appearing on one card. And yes, I know that changelings have every creature type, but even if we have the changelings count towards every creature type in the game, the ranking of these creature types would be the same, since the same number of cards would be added to every creature type. Let's go through each of these exceedingly rare creature types and show the one representative for each of them. We'll start with the first group, and that's those creature types that appear only on a single creature card. Obviously, these are all tied, so we're just going to go in alphabetical order. First, let's look at Brushwag, who appears on, well, Brushwag. Brushwags, or should I say... Brushwag, singular, seems to be a type of fictional creature original to Magic the Gathering, and maybe that's why they decided to hold on to it, but if you want to keep it around, why not print more of them at some point? This seems like a creature that could easily be changed to either Beast or Elemental, or heck, even Beast Elemental. Next we'll look at Dreadnought, whose only representative is Phyrexian Dreadnought. This is probably the most famous card on this list, since we all remember the first time we saw this one mana 12-12 and imagined how we could break it. This one is more puzzling than Brushwag, I think, since a Dreadnought is a battleship, a meaning that would be used on the plane of Ixalan. So why is it a creature type here, and why aren't those Dreadnoughts in Ixalan also Dreadnoughts, in addition to being vehicles? This gets even more complicated because, as you can see on the original card, it was just an artifact creature. It didn't have a type. Instead, it would be assigned a creature type later on, that Dreadnought creature type, and it's just never been taken away, which is really strange, especially when this creature looks like a lot of horrors in Magic, and lots of Phyrexian cards are horrors. This is another really weird one not to get eroded. Then there's Ferret. Okay, this is something that kind of makes sense as a creature type. I don't have as many objections to this one not getting eroded, but it is kind of weird that there's only one of them, and it was printed in 1995. We've seen mongooses since then, which are pretty closely related, but why not some more ferrets? I mean, this creature type already exists, and there's no real reason not to print more of them. Next is a very recent creature type, at least relatively speaking, and that's Lamia. This is kind of a strange thing to happen in 2014, since Wizards is generally very careful these days about creature types, and doesn't usually want to create only one card with that type. Like lots of creature types on Theros, this one comes from Greek mythology. In Greek myths, Lamia is either a sea monster or a demonic figure, and this Lamia we're looking at seems to be the latter, so uh, why isn't this a demon? Maybe next time we go to Theros, which I think will be soon, we'll see at least one other Lamia, and this won't bother me so much. 
Then there's Oyster. For many of these, I have suggestions as to what the creature type could have been, so that it wouldn't be a weird one of, but with Oyster, I'm not really sure where to go. We don't really have any other creature type in Magic that can work for this one, and I like the flavor on Giant Oyster, that it clamps shut on something and it can't untap. This is, like Ferrets, a creature type I'm okay with, but I don't see why we haven't seen some other Oysters over the years. Sable is, like Lamia, a relatively recently introduced creature type. Once again from Theros, but there's only a single card with that creature type, like all the cards on this list, and in this case it's Bronze Sable. In our real world, Sables are small carnivorous mammals who live in forests. Weirdly enough, the range of the Sables we know today don't actually get close to Greece at all, so not really sure why these Asian mammals were introduced on Theros of all planes. Seems like a weird flavor choice on top of being a needless creature type. This could have easily just been a beast. With Sponge, we have our second aquatic creature with a unique creature type. This one, like Oyster, is another where I'm not really sure the creature type should go. Sponge makes sense here, I guess. It just seems like a weird place to go only a single time in the entire history of Magic. The last of these eight creature types that only appear on a single creature card is Wombat, who, along with Ferret and Sable, is another small mammal that has its own creature type despite only appearing on a single card. Like the Sable, I'm not really sure why we haven't eroded this to Beast. Now that we've looked at those eight obscure creature types, let's move to the two that appear only on a card that makes creature tokens. As was the case with the group of eight, this group is obviously tied, and I'm just going to talk about both of them in alphabetical order. The first of these is Caribou, who can only be made by Caribou range. This really seems like it should have gotten changed with the great creature type update to Elk, since that is a relatively frequently appearing creature type in the game, and it seems to be used fairly broadly to refer to four-legged hoofed animals with antlers, and obviously caribou fall into that category. Obviously, this is complicated by the fact that caribous are real-world animals that are not elk, but that's also true of some of the other animals that appear as elks in this game. The other one of these is the deserter creature type, which appears on Kildor and Home Guard. The guard makes a 0-1 token every time it attacks or blocks, but why did it have to be a deserter? Can we make it a human or something? I don't know. This seems like way too specific of a creature type these days. It is even more annoying that they printed a card called Afflicted Deserter and didn't give it this creature type when it would have made sense. All right, so those are the 10 rarest creature types in the game. Now let's move to the other end of the spectrum and look at the most frequently occurring creature types. I've done MTG Top 10s on almost every one of the creature types that we're going to see here, so if you want to know how specific cards with the same creature type rank against one another, you should be able to find links to all those Top 10s in the description. Another thing to keep in mind is that this list is current as of the release of Modern Horizons. Things may move around in the future, especially because, as you'll see, there are some rather close scores here. Additionally, I'm not going to comment extensively on the competitive history of these creature types, though I will mention them in passing. How good or bad creature types are is something that will be covered in the next two MTG Top 10s on the topic of creature types. Now let's look at the 10th most common creature type in the game, which is Goblins. Wizards describes Goblins as the characteristic race for red, in that they are commonly occurring sentient humanoid creatures throughout the multiverse who are almost always red and represent red philosophies. They are usually low-costed aggressive creatures who are really good at doing damage in a hurry. Goblin Tribal has been a major theme in multiple sets, especially Onslaught and Lorwyn Block. At various times throughout the game's history, Goblin Tribal decks have been a major force in competitive magic. At number 9 is another characteristic race, Elves, who are the characteristic race for green. Elves are usually small, low-costed creatures who seem to have an aptitude especially for creating mana. Over the years, the elf creature type has received a great deal of tribal support, with elf tribal being a major theme in blocks like Onslaught and Lorwyn. Tribal elf decks have been competitive for much of the game's history. At number 8 we have Clerics, which is the first class to appear on this list. In general, starting in Lorwyn block and applied retroactively with the Grand Creature Type update, sentient creatures tend to have both a race and a class. Goblin and Elf, which we've already looked at, are races, but Cleric is a class. In other words, the job of these individuals within their society. Clerics are usually religious figures or healers in magic, and while they are most frequent in white, they have appeared in every single color. Clerics have not received a huge amount of tribal support over the years, despite the fact that there are so many of them. Though they did receive some in Onslaught block, there have hardly been any new cards printed to support the creature type in the 17 years since then. 
At number seven, we have elementals, which are sentient beings who are made of elemental energy. They are most frequent in red, blue, and green, but they do appear in every color because every color has some sort of elemental energy. They also appear in just about every plane. Lorwyn Block is the only time they've received considerable tribal support. At number six are zombies, the last characteristic race to make the list, with zombies obviously serving that role in black. While they have been predominantly black throughout the history of the game, they have appeared in every other color as well. Zombies, like goblins and elves, are often small and efficient creatures, but zombies frequently have abilities that involve sacrificing themselves or interacting with the graveyard. Zombies get a leg up on elves and goblins because they have had focused tribal support in more sets. In addition to receiving that attention in Onslaught block, this was also true in both Innistrad blocks and in Amonkhet block. Additionally, since a zombie is a reanimated corpse, zombies can appear alongside other race creature types like goblin or elf. Zombies have been a major force on the competitive scene the most recently of these three characteristic races. And number five are spirits, which are entities that were once living, but have passed on and become ephemeral creatures. Spirits appear in every color, and it is often used alongside another creature type, since just about any type of creature can become a spirit. Unless the spirit looks like they used to be a human, in which case they simply have the spirit type. Spirits received tribal support on the plane of Kamigawa, as well as on both trips to Innistrad. Spirit tribal decks have been relevant in modern since that second trip to that plane. At number four, we have Wizard, the first class creature type to appear since Clerics at number eight. Of the top four creature types on this list, three of them are going to be classes, which makes sense since while creature types like Goblin may not appear on every single plane, there are wizards on every plane we've visited so far, since wizards are simply people capable of magic and, well, this game is kind of focused on magic. Also, like all classes, there can also be goblin wizards, zombie wizards, etc. Wizards are most frequently red or blue and tend to have an affinity for instance and sorceries, but they've appeared in every other color too. Wizard did receive some tribal support in Onslaught and Lorwyn block, and more recently in Dominaria. There is actually a tribal wizard deck that is fairly competitive and standard right now. And number three are soldiers. Like all classes, this one is plentiful because every plane is in need of armies, and that means every single plane has soldiers. Soldiers are most frequently white, but like most classes, they have appeared in every color. Soldiers have only received real tribal support once, back in Onslaught block. The second most frequent creature type in all of Magic is Warrior. Like soldiers, every plane needs warriors. That said, I'm not 100% sure I understand the distinction that Wizards has thus far made between these two creature types. I suppose it seems primarily that soldiers are people who serve in armies, while warriors seem to be more roving fighter types or mercenaries. Warriors receive tribal support in both Lorwyn and Tarkir block. And at number one, surprising no one, is another race, humans, who Wizards considers the representative race for white. I think this designation is a little more puzzling than the other ones, since humans, while, sure, appear at white more than anywhere else, it isn't like they do so by a wide margin. Humans appear in every color, something that I think is meant to convey their fairly adaptive nature, so I really don't feel like they're actually the representative race, despite wizards designating them as such. In addition, because humans appear in so many different colors, it's hard to see how white philosophies are embodied in all human cards, or at least lots of human cards. Humans have received tribal support on both visits to Innistrad, and right now there's a tier one humans deck in Modern. All right, so those are the most and least frequent creature types in all of Magic. I hope you haven't gotten your fill of creature type discussion because the next two MTG Top 10s are going to dive right into it as well, beginning with this Friday's that looks at the 10 worst creature types based on how they've performed at the game's highest level. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future MTG Top 10s, including those upcoming ones on the best and worst creature types, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to look at MTG Top 10s I've done in the past, including those on lots of creature types on this list, you should see the playlist on your screen now. Thanks for watching.